Hi, I'm Teresa and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my November wrap up and I cannot believe I'm doing my November wrap up. How on earth is it December? What? But yes, um, November, I will be honest, was not my best reading month. I have been very, very busy with university and I still will be for the first half of December. But you know what? December wrap up, it's going to be good. I have high hopes for December's reading month. But back to November, I have been participating in the Clear Your Shit readathon, which is hosted by Andy and Art, and I will leave a link to all the information about it down below. It's very cool. It runs over two months, so you could join for the December one if you wanted. And the purpose of this readathon is clearing out your own TBR, so I've been really focusing on doing that and particularly reading the books that I bought before this year that I know I'm not that interested in. And so as a result, I do have quite a few three star reads, but I'm quite happy with my progress with it so far, hoping to do a bit more next month. And yes, let's just get into the books I've read this month. So the first book I read was Soccer Girls by Claire Legrand. This one was not one of the ones I was meaning to get rid of. This is one I really enjoyed. I got this for my birthday earlier this year and I really really enjoyed this. This is a sapphic horror book. So this book takes place on an island called Sockel Rock and for years and years and years girls have been going missing, disappearing without a trace and are never found. And so you follow these three main characters on this island. So you've got Zoe and her best friend is one of these girls that disappeared and she's been trying to solve the case, you know, looking into the myth and the legend surrounding the island and the cases of the disappeared girls. And she's become very, very suspicious of Val, the one of the other narrators, who is like the queen bee of this, of their age group and her family of the town, really. She has noticed that a lot of the girls have been associated with Val's family throughout the generations. And finally, you have got Marion, who has just moved there and like weird stuff's happening to her and so she has moved on to the land of Val's family and she's her and her mother are working like as housekeepers there and you know weird shit's going down but also the girls are all meeting and kind of becoming friends. Marion ends up befriending both of the girls who both hate each other so it's like a friendship triangle rather than a love triangle it's quite fun. I really really like this book I like the horror um I really like the girls and how like messy and I don't know like there's just a, such an emphasis on the power of teenage girls in this book and that's something I adore and I just really enjoyed that. I really liked that you've got an asexual character and a sapphic relationship between these three main girls. I loved reading that as well. It was just it was so lovely. I really did enjoy this. My only complaint was I wanted it to be a bit scarier. <laughs> I I didn't find myself that scared by the horror element, but it was good fun and I really did very much enjoy this. The next book I read was Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. This is actually an ARC that I received a few months ago, though the book has long since been published. I received it after publication because of COVID delays, but just a disclaimer, it is an unfinished copy and I did receive it for free. I really also enjoyed this one. I actually read it at the same time as Sockel Girls, just to kind of balance out <laughs> the horror with some nice romance. So yes, as I've said, this is a romance book. It is set in England and you're following Luke, who is the son of these two ex-rock stars who are divorced and, and over the years his father's ended up in the tabloids a lot for various drugs and alcohol and other problems and recently he said he's starting to turn his life around, he's part of a show and this means that Luke as his son is also thrown into the spotlight a little bit and he also ends up in the tabloids and after a few unsavoury pictures of him surface he actually stands to lose his job because he works for a charity and people are pulling out of donating to the charity. And so he requires a fake boyfriend to offset this negative press and so he ends up in contact with Oliver. And Oliver is very clean cut. He is the complete opposite of Luke. And I really, really just enjoyed this romance, their fake relationship. I loved it so much. A lot of fun. 
I absolutely flew through this one and saw Cool Girls over a few days and yes, I very very highly recommend. This had a lot more depth than I was expecting and I just really really enjoyed it. The next book I read, just very quickly, was Les Tongers by Albert Camus. This was for my French literature course, so I'm not going to talk too much about it because obviously it is in French. So I didn't know a lot going into this book, but it was quite interesting to read. I did kind of enjoy it and I enjoyed studying it. The next book I read was Fox by Nadine Brands. I of course just had to read this around November 5th because you know what, when else am I going to read a book centering around the gunpowder plot? So this is a historical fantasy and it's centered around the gunpowder plot. Guy Fox trying to blow up parliament during the 17th century. So this follows Guy Fox's son and in this society there's magic and the kind of magic you can control is controlled by the mask that you wear and the colour of it. So you know like brown you can control everything the colour brown. Uh, Guy Fox has a black mask, he controls shadows and stuff, things like that. And the society has been at war with itself for quite a while because there are some people who will use the white light, this other power that allows them to control multiple colours. And others that say, nah, that's wrong, that's the reason that we have got the stone plague, where people start turning to stone. And yet, anyway, Thomas, the main character of this, he has got stone plague, he is hiding it. And because he's got the plague, his father will not make him a mask and so he cannot use magic. And so he sets off to London when he gets kicked out of school for not receiving his mask. And he goes to hunt down his father and ask him to make him a mask. And he ends up getting involved in the gunpowder plot. And there's also a romance and just Thomas trying to figure out who's in the right in the society. But yeah, it was, it was alright, but I just... I don't know, I wanted a lot more from it. I felt like it just didn't do as much as it could have with such an interesting premise. So yeah, I ended up giving it three stars. I honestly can't remember much about it. That's how big an impact it made on me. <laughs> Next up, I read The Red Pyramid by Rick Riordan. This is the first book in the King Chronicle series, which focuses on ancient Egyptian mythology. And I've only read the Percy Jackson series and the Heroes of Olympus series by Rick Riordan. So I'm trying to like slowly make my way through his other books. And I did also very much enjoy it, but I think it's also a three star. It just didn't blow me away. It wasn't something that I really, really enjoyed. So this was a dual perspective of Carter and Sadie Kane, brother and sister. And they are kind of thrown into this world of ancient Egyptian mythology come to life in the modern day setting and they're trying to stop the big bad thing from happening and being introduced to the society and the big strong point of this and I think everything with Rick Riordan is the mythology and how it's incorporated into the modern day and how it functions in the modern day. I find that so 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 interesting and loved it in this one. However, it was very long and I just felt like it was maybe a bit too long and I did find myself getting bored at times. I don't know, I feel like part of this has just been my mood. I've been very three-starry and just tired and exhausted from uni, so maybe part of this is just me. It was fun, but I hoped for better and I hope that the series will improve as it goes on. So the next book I read was The Witch's Kiss by Catherine and Elizabeth Carr. This is definitely one of the older ones I've had on my shelf and I actually ended up DNFing this. I got about halfway through, about 200 pages in I was listening to a mix of the audiobook and reading it and honestly I was just fucking bored. <laughs> I just really didn't care and I couldn't see myself growing to care as a book could progress. Like if I was halfway through and nothing had snagged my interest I wasn't going to fall in love with it in the next couple hundred pages. This follows a girl called Mary and she is a witch but trying to not be a witch and this is from like an an ancient family thing. It's very low key. You also get these perspectives from Anglo-Saxon times and the consequences of what happened then. Um, a dark magician was doing stuff then and then they imprisoned him and Mary's ancestor went and swore an oath saying that her descendant would stop him and now Mary has to stop him. I found that half the book was this flashbacks but I feel like it was just so much flashback and nothing really happening in the present and that a lot of the flashback was unnecessary. Yes, and I think she ends up falling in love with the like 
servant of this dark magician. So yeah, this is a DNF. I'm probably gonna unhaul, but at least it's off of my shelf, off of my TBR. And the final book I read in November, I mentioned in my previous video, and that is Chasing Stars by Mallory Blackman. And this was yet another three star read. I bought this quite a few years ago because I read and loved another book by Mallory Blackman and I never got around to it. And I really should have just read it when I got it because I would have eaten this shit up as like a 13, 14 year old, but now it's just so fucking painfully heterosexual. <laughs> so this is set in the future and it's sci-fi. And so this girl V and her brother Aiden are the only survivors of this mysterious virus that wiped out their entire ship very, very far from Earth. And so she's been trying to make their way back for the past three years, got about a year to go. And on their way, they get a distress signal from what they thought to be an uninhabited planet. And it turns out to be a colony of people. And they're being attacked by the Mazan, which are like the aliens, the evil aliens. And so they decide to try and rescue them, rescue a bunch, and now they've got all these folk on their ship. So there's some fun dynamics there. Additionally, there's this guy as part of the colony and him and V have this like instant insta love attraction thing going on. Very sorry if that camera angle just changed. I gesticulated a bit and knocked down the camera. Again. <laughs> anyway, looking forward to getting a tripod. Anyway, yeah, you've got this insta love and this book is very focused on their relationship. It is an Othello retelling and you know what? It was entertaining. I read like half of it in one sitting almost in one day. As I said, I'd, I'd have eaten this up like three or four years ago, but for now, God, their relationship, they were so heterosexual. <laughs> They're like, oh yeah, they used to have these problems and these discriminations against people for their race or their sexuality or all of that. And then like did nothing to show that it was any different nowadays. There's just one scene that stuck out to me was she was talking to the doctor from the colony, this nice lady. And she says, so where did you meet your husband? And the lady's never mentioned her husband, but her main character V had inferred that she was married from the way she spoke. It's just this assumption that it would be a husband rather than a wife or anything while saying, oh yeah, sexuality and that, we don't give a fuck nowadays. Like if you're gonna do that, you need to do that. Not a bad book, but one that I would have preferred many a year ago. And yes, that is the last of what I read. So unfortunately, quite a average reading month, but I have very high hopes for December. I've got some festive queer books picked out, some other books I'm very excited by, and I've already read two books or finished two books, so we're off to a good start. So yeah, this is the end of the video. If you've enjoyed, please leave a like, subscribe if you haven't, leave a comment. This all just means the world and really helps out. And if you want to keep up with me elsewhere, I've got my social media link below. As always, I'll have Goodreads links for all these books, my review of boyfriend material since it's an arc, and yes, I hope you've enjoyed and I will see you in another video soon.